Transactions with interested parties and shareholders' personal interests are major issues in the company law, and they fully represent the principal agent problem. Accordingly, they, they require substantial attention by the case law and creative solutions, whereby on one hand there is the desire to create a growing, efficient, multi-transaction market, and on the other hand, an honest and fair market. Holder of control transactions are not themselves wrong as there may uh, very well be situation where these kinds of transactions can promote the company's business. However, however, the exercise of personal interests for the transaction architects requires an exam examination of those transactions by someone who lacks personal interest. In Israel, a triple approval mechanism was put in play in these kinds of transactions, approval by the board of directors, approval of the audit committee, a committee with a majority of independent directors, and the, the approval of the general stakehold, stockholders assembly, not counting the ones with any personal tie to transactions that is being approved. This is how the legislator in Israel asked to defend the minority shareholders in the company, without preventing the company from utilizing the full scope of business co corporations it may have changing that the Israeli legislature had led in the capital market during the three, four years, include law amendments, the creation of or the establishment of the economic division in Tel Aviv District Court, and administrative enforcement procedures. All of these were meant to advance the efficiency of the enforcement in the capital market while promoting the most important values of a healthy and functioning market, fairness and transparency. <coughs> These develop developments are already, sh are already showing results. For instance, there has been a reduction, a big one, in, uh, in the number of transactions with interested parties pu in public companies, while in 2011, approximately 1,238 transactions between public companies and their holders of control were reported. In 2012, one year later, there were only 802 transactions. The current period we are in especially interesting. Discussions of corporate governance and fair conduct of office holders and holders of control has gathered momentum only in recent years and many of the cases that arrive to the economic division door are precedental cases with neither, neither the Supreme Court nor the legislature have discussed. Sometimes it's very convenient for the division's judges to look upon Delaware, where the economic court has widespread case law for many years now. Of course, the markets in two, in two countries, the Israeli and the American, are different in many ways. These differences have implication on the suitability of the legal rules set by the Delaware's courts for the Israel legal system. One of the main doctrines in the economic division has imported from the US is regarding the examination of companies' board decisions, the, B, the BJR and the entire fairness rule, that in cases ultra-shaped, Mahteshima Gan and others. I would like to focus now on the question that recently arose in, the Israeli, in Israel has already received certain attention in Delaware. Talking about the, a, a case that a, I lately a given, had been lately given by me in the matter of partner, I dealt with the subject of consequences, a leveraged buyout has on a company's decision to distribute dividends and create capital reduction. The examination took place on three major levels. The first, if and when can a dividend distribution be a transaction of public company with controlling shareholders therein? And second, if and when can high leverage and controlling shareholders debts create personal interest of the controlling shareholder in a decision to distribute dif dividends? Third, what standard should be applied on these decisions? <coughs> Business judgment rule, heightened scrutiny, scrutiny, or entire fairness. In the partner case, the argument was in general outline that the high leverage controlling shareholder is distributing all the company's profits and more. And through the funds he receives from the distributions, he is paying off his debts. While company is forced to take out loans in order to continue its business operation. 
Thus, the controlling shareholder is effectively transferring his debt and expenses from his shoulders to the company's one. I first found that the dis distribution of dividend, both a regular distribution and a distribution by way of a capital reduction, is not considered a transaction according to the Israeli corporate law. In my opinion, the distribution of, div of dividend, even by the way of reduction in capital, which needs the court approval, is not a transaction per its definition in corporate law. Such a distribution is not the grant of a right of of other benefit, but realization of the shareholders' existing right, which they purchased at the time they purchased their shares and as a result of that purchase. The shareholders' right to receive their shares of dividend is a built-in right to their investment in the company. The decision to distribute a dividend only determines that it will be distributed to the shareholders. I, uh, I found it very... Uh, I found the words of Professor Zohar Goshen in case of Yarden uh, versus Lifshitz, but I'll skip, I'll skip this uh, part. Mr. Goshen will speak about it later, maybe. Once the dividend distributed is not a transaction, it can't be a transaction with the holder of control. Therefore, it is not subject to the triple approval mechanism. What's more, the mechanism is, in many cases, is ineffective as solving the principal agent problem between the holder of control and the company's best interest. In cases of dividend distribution, for, exa for example, the interests of the holder of control and the shareholders most, mostly concede and don't necessarily suit the best interest of the company. The legislature granted the General Assembly of Stockholder the ability to approve or throw transaction in which holder of control cannot be trusted to put the best interests of the company before his own interest. Thus, the regulator assumed that the minority shareholders will consider the company's best interests objectively. However, it is hard to say that decisions regarding distribution do not sway the judgment of the entire general uh, meeting. Dividend distribution is the action that best represents the conflict between a company's shareholders and its creditors. Simply put, while the shareholders welcome money from the company going to their pocket, the company's creditors are sorrow, sorrow, sorrowful about this transfer, as it empties the company's pocket from which they are supposed to, to one day be paid. Thus, each of these groups pulls the rope in, on its own direction. The shareholders encourage dividend distribution, while the company's creditors aspire to limit it. Therefore, materially, the triple approval mechanism cannot resolve a decision to distribute which harms the company. I believe it is better to examine the board's decision regarding to distribution if in the said decision they breach their duties to the company. Thus, for example, when the controlling shareholders has a pers a shareholder has a personal interest in the distribution and the, and the members of the board pers uh, prefer this interest over the company's one. As I ruled in the matter of partner, there are cases in which the high leverage will create personal interest for the controlling shareholder. However, these cases are rare for several reasons. First, as a matter of policy, we wish to encourage leverage buyouts, which allow to somewhat dispress the centralization in the market. Attributing personal interest to shareholder as a result of his need for dividend uh, funds should be done cautiously and sprangly. One should avoid generalization, such as the assumption that every leverage purchase of control of a company necessarily forms for the holder of control personal interest in the dividend funds, which will be distributed until, the pays off his, uh, until he pays off his debts. Such generalization might not only cause injustice to holders of control, that give top priority to the best interest of the company, but also creating a chilling if effect which will deter people from purchasing control of fabric companies. Note well that leverage buyout is not a dirty word and can be, uh, can be des desirable. One should remember that most of transactions in the market of purchase of, of purchase of control in companies generally and in the public companies specifically are transactions of large financial scale that can reach hundreds of millions of shekels and even billions of shekels as in the a partner case. 
and the preliminary examination teaches that the most of these transactions, if not all of them, are conducted by holders of control which are assisted by some form of leveraging. So it can be said that most of the transactions in the market would, be not be, would have not been made without leveraging, as is the words of, uh, uh, I will skip this uh, part of that. Furthermore, finding the debts owned by the controlling shareholders create personal interest in dividend distribution can paralyze the activity in the market and does not match the corporate reality. Therefore, only exceptional case in the business landscape will create personal interest for the controlling shareholders. However, the reality of things is that in a certain circumstances, the need of a shareholder for dividend funds may create a material concern of swaying his judgment so he prefers his own personal gain upon the company's best interest. These situations cannot be defined in advance in closed list. Each case must be examined accordingly to its, to its circumstances. This examination should be con conducted only if there is knowledge of a specific need of the shareholder for dividend funds, for instance, a specific substantial and material debt with a set payment date. Also, to be considered, first, the amount needed by the shareholder, second, the urgency to raise this amount, third, the other, op the other options he has, he has other than the dividend distribution, fourth, the equity capital of the shareholder has invested in the company, fifth, whether the controlling shareholder is personally gar guarantor of all debts, and sixth and, six and last, any other re relevant circumstances. In a decision, I'm talking about Delaware, I'll skip that part. The Israeli market and the American market are very different. A main characteristic different, uh, differentiation is between the two, the two uh, states, the share of the company stock held by controlling party. While in the U.S., the controlling shareholder usually holds a small percentage, up to 10%. In Israel, the controlling shareholders hold a high percentage of the company's stock, about up to 70%. This difference has material implication in the context of dividend as a personal interest. The owner of control in the U.S., if, he's, if, he, if he's also happens to be the company's CEO or chairman, might earn from a dividend distribution a minor income compared to his salary. Thus, the chance that a distribution will create a personal interest for him is small. However, holding a relatively small share of the company's stock might lead to an attempt to inflate the size of the dividends in order to extract the needed amount. As mentioned earlier, all should be examined according to the circumstances of the case and the specific controlling shareholders. And I'm speaking about the appropriate standard as I see it. Regarding the appropriate standard to be applied to the, boards of, to the board's decision, even in the case where the need of liquid funds is strong, as described by the Delaware Court, that, that it creates an added linkage for controlling shareholder. It is hard to say which standard should apply. Seemingly, this is not a classic case for implementing the entire fairness rule, because there is no inequality between the minority shareholders and the controlling shareholders Everyone receives dividend pro rata. And I'm quoting from Sinclair. However, in Sinclair, the, the Delaware Supreme Court ruled that sometimes when the dividend distribution is essentially self-dealing, meaning that there is added consideration for the controlling shareholder, the entire fairness rule should, can apply. The Delaware Court found it in that case that such, such a case can be when, for example, the company has two kinds of shares, one of controlling shareholder and one of the minority shareholder, and a decision is made to distribute a dividend only to, the, to one, uh, one, uh, one group of shareholders. In my opinion, noting the Sinclair ruling was given over 40 years ago, that are uh, middle cases where there is, no class, there is no class added consideration for the controlling shareholder, and therefore there is no place to implement the entire fairness standard. However, one cannot ignore the, the controlling shareholder personal interest which is dis disrupting his judgment. Therefore, it should be also not to, be, to, to try to implement the business judgment rule when reviewing the board's conduction. 
In this kind of situation, I believe it's appropriate to implement a middle rule, as was done in Unicol in the case of hostile takeovers, a heightened business judgment rule. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking about the case in Calic versus Sun, Sunridge. In a similar matter, when the court finds that the controlling shareholder has a personal interest in the decision to distribute a dividend, a concern automatically rises that the board is influenced by the shadow of controlling shareholder and will consider his best interest before that of the company. In, su in such a situation, a harsher standard than BJR will be applied to the board, one which imposes a certain burden on board members to justify their decisions. So I ruled again in, in a, a partner, this must be clarified that business judgment rule is not the sum of everything. As I also detailed in the matter of ultrashape when I dealt ex extensively with this doctrine, there are situations where a different rule will be applied, a heightened judgment rule or the entire fairness rule. There are a heightened standard that, ca that, that uh, than that of the business judgment rule was set. And I'll say some uh, the final things. The economic division in Tel Aviv District Court is still taking its first steps and exploring new grounds that have to be explored yet. In the Israel legal system, for example, like a matter I mentioned here, or the matter of personal interest to the minority shareholder in General Assembly, as issue that Judge Ronen dealt with mostly, and many more. In our decisions, we try to find elusive balance between two notions. On one hand, guarding a fair and, trans and sp transparent capital market, a market which is open and accessible to everyone who wishes to take part in it. That is both for new investors and initia initia uh, initiators who wish to raise capital. On the other hand, the will to restrain and keep the market free from uh, overregulated thus keeping incentives for companies to join or remain as a part of it. As lo all along, trying to do the, the job as fast and efficient as possible to keep up with pace of market and not to slow it down. Thank you very much.